little folk. Those who deny objective historic forces find a ready-made argument in the outcome of the war. The Germans should really have won. That they did not was due to the stupidity of their leaders. Now Hitler's decisive moments of stupidity, his refusal in the thick of war to make war on England, his attacks on Russia and America, have a precise social meaning, which developed according to its own dialectic ineluctably from one reasonable step to the next and to catastrophe. But even if it had been stupidity, it would have been historically comprehensible. Stupidity is not a natural quality, but one socially produced and reinforced. The German ruling clique drove towards war because they were excluded from a position of imperial power. But in their exclusion lay the reason for the blind and clumsy provincialism that made Hitler's and Ribbentrop's policies uncompetitive and their war a gamble. That they were as badly informed about the Tory ba balance between general class interests and British special interests and about the strength of the Red Army, as were their own masses behind the cordon of the Third Reich, is inseparable from the historical causes of National Socialism and almost from its strength. The sole chance of success for their reckless adventure lay in their knowing no better, and this was also the reason for its failure. Germany's industrial backwardness forced its politicians, anxious to regain lost ground and, as have-nots, specially qualified for the role, to fall back on their immediate narrow experience, that of the political facade. They saw nothing before them except cheering assemblies and frightened negotiators. This blocked their view of the objective power of a greater mass of capital. It was imminent revenge on Hitler that he, the executioner of liberal society, was yet in his own state of consciousness too liberal to perceive how industrial potential outside Germany was establishing, under the veil of liberalism, its irresistible domination. He who recognized the untruth in liberalism, as did no other bourgeois, could yet not recognize the power behind him, the social tendency for which Hitler was really no more than drummer. His consciousness regressed to the standpoint of his weaker, short-sighted opponents that he had first adopted in order to make shorter work of them. Germany's hour necessarily accorded with such stupidity, for only leaders who resembled the people of the country in their ignorance of the world and global economics could harness them to war and their pig-headedness to an enterprise wholly unhampered by reflection. Hitler's stupidity was a ruse of reason.